On this episode of Resume Maniacs TV, I sit down with fellow retired crime fighter, master model maker and painter, Saul Alvarez. Yeah, my name is uh, Saul Alvarez. Uh, I've been in the hobby now for about 22 years. Um, pretty much, I, I, I'm a painter primarily, but I also do some sculpting. Uh, my forte is Universal Monsters. That, that's my first love. Uh, just a, a little background on myself. Uh, back in around, sometime around 68, uh, I got introduced to uh, the Aurora model kits. Uh, my first one was uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, it was actually inside a dumpster in an abandoned building. Uh, my father was looking at the house, uh, and uh, actually at the, at the building, and they were constructing everything. And I looked at, uh, at the creature from across the room. I went over there and I picked it up. I had no clue what it was. I knew nothing about Universal Monsters. I knew nothing about uh, that genre. But I picked it up and I thought it was so cool. Creepy but cool. Something about it just affected me in a certain way. Uh, obviously, I asked my father if I could keep it. You know, he just, uh, yeah, sure, of course, why not? Long story short, Famous Monsters came along. Uh, my grandfather just, you know, uh, threw a collection of Famous Monsters back issues he knew because of the, just because of that one little creature kid. Back issues of uh, Famous Monsters, and then I, I was up to date with them all the way through my adulthood. At one point, though, uh, I did get away from, from you know, the, the, the monsters in the collection and all that. You know, you meet the, the girl of your life, uh, you start having babies, you know, life in general gets in and uh, you start working and, and you lose track of everything. Uh, one day, uh, I went to Barnes & Nobles. I walked in, there was Monster Scene Magazine, Christopher Lee on the cover. I walked in, I opened it up, I look at it, and, uh, and I see an advertisement for Jane's company. They don't exist anymore, which they did. John Lukovic, the owner, put a, uh, uh, an advertisement for Man of a Thousand Faces. One of my favorite actors, Lon Chaney Sr. Uh, loved Ch uh, Chaney because as a kid, when I did get into Famous Monsters, I was introduced, of course, by the editor of Forey Ackerman. And my grandmother was telling me how in 1925, uh, she saw the original Phantom of the Opera when it was released. Uh, so Chaney was really pretty close to me at that point it still is um, anywho uh, I told my wife about uh, the man of a thousand faces couldn't believe it was hundred and eighty dollars opposed to an Aurora kit that sold for you know a buck or a buck and change but anywho uh, I used to be a uh, police officer I was a detective for the NYPD uh, that day which was my birthday November 6 guys don't forget um, I came home and there was a box from Jane is that company that I saw advertised in a magazine I thought nothing of it, but I brought it into the house, opened it up, there it was, Man of a Thousand Faces. Once I opened it up, the first thing that I picked out was the bust of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. First thing that came to my mind, this is quality, quality stuff. I mean, this, this was museum quality sculpture, nothing like the old plastic Aurora kits. Uh, couldn't believe it. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to, how to build it. I didn't know how to paint it. I don't know what it you know, entailed. Uh, but thank God that there were a couple of magazines out there. Um, Amazing Figure Modeler magazine. Uh, David Fisher with his uh, painting tapes uh, came out right after that. And uh, long story short, thank God for uh, Dave Fisher. He's the one that taught me, without knowing who he was, he's the one that taught me how to paint through these uh, videos. I, I personally don't like to prep kits. Uh, you know, just that process of sanding and, and painting and uh, drilling and I, I don't like it. I personally have friends that do love it. They love it. I, I would rather give them my kits and let them do the work, which I don't, but uh, they love doing it. I don't understand why. I like to get right in the groove, man. I like to just go in there and start painting and start bringing this thing alive. Uh, the difference between back in the day and today, I mean, there's a lot of factors. I mean, you know, as anything else, uh, the art, uh, art grows. Uh, you have uh, videos, you have graphic design, you have 3D printing. Um, you know, the quality today is just unbelievable. When you open up a box and you hardly see a seam line, I mean, you've got companies like, uh, for instance, just as, a, as an example, Forbidden Zone. I mean, those guys, uh, Mark Brokaw, uh, Earthbound Studios, you know, you open up the box and you pop it out, uh, Blackheart Enterprise with George Stevenson. I mean, it's ready to paint. You know, basically, that I love. And of course, those companies uh, have the genre that I love, which is the Universal Monsters. 
Um, but yeah, today it's, it's, it's very different than back in the day. Because back in the day, obviously where the name came from, Garage Kids, it was basically all made in the garage or in somebody's basement. You know, today, I mean, they, you know, they're setting up a workshop and, and they're, you know, they're making uh, uh, molds and, and castings into a work of art. You know, not just the painting part and the building part is a work of art anymore. It's actually the process of, of creating these pieces from scratch. Um, you said you had a family, you have little kids, or how old are they still little? Or? Well, no, uh, my kids are already grown. Uh, I got 38, 29, and 23, and, and, and two 12 year old grandkids. And uh, they, they're not in this hobby, they, but they do appreciate what I, what I do. Um, they better appreciate what I do. But, uh, for instance, I, I could be painting something for a client. Uh, I have a big clientele, and uh, which is great. Uh, my kids and even my wife, or even the, grand, the grandkids now, I, I could paint and I'll call them over and I'll say, well, listen, what do you think about this? And the good thing about the, uh, my grandkids, they're 12 years old, uh, they're honest. Uh, you know, they'll come up to me and they'll say, hey, uh, Grandpa, you're getting fat. And I'm getting fat. And they're honest. And when they say, Grandpa, you know what? I don't like that color. You know, they got something coming up to that, so you know what, uh, I really appreciate it. So, but with that said though, because I'm including them in that, they start appreciating what I do and they start appreciating the arts. So I could say that both my daughters, uh, my son, and my grandkids now, uh, they do appreciate the arts and they appreciate sculpture, uh, paintings, because I do collect also paintings in my home, and they do appreciate the whole art genre. The wife, how does she appreciate this? She, obviously she supports what you do. Uh, or maybe she doesn't, but how do you find the time to sit down and paint with a family? Yeah, well, you know, every, every, everyone's already grown. Uh, my oldest is married, my my middle child is already gone, she's a school teacher. Uh, my son is an actor, uh, working act, well, you know. Uh, anyway, he's, uh, he's, he's on his own, so it's just my wife and I. Uh, she works full time, I'm retired, uh, works out perfect. And the good thing with my wife and I that we have this this relationship that uh, she doesn't put you know any walls uh, with what I do she accepts what I do and she also appreciates what I do so and vice versa what's your favorite paint to work in I mean, you don't have to necessarily name a company do you mix medium watercolor oil uh, pastels That's a good question very good question I uh, I did a demo today on a life-size exorcist bus as a matter of fact I wish I had it over here um, it's um, I use acrylic paints, but uh, I also use any type of acrylic paints. You know, you have companies like Garage Kit Colors, you have Palm Art, you have Golden, uh, and you have your basic uh, uh, Michaels or AC Moore colors uh, that are uh, 59 cents to a dollar, you know, bottle, cheap bottles from, uh, from Michaels. I use any of that. Uh, oils uh, I use for shading, uh, for blending, uh, but you have to know how to use them also. You can't use them on top of of acrylics without doing some kind of sealing or anything like that. Uh, pastels I use. Uh, I use so much, so much medium that's just uh, here's you know, a, it's broad, very broad. Here's a question. Do you find yourself working more on clients' pieces or your own piece? Like, if it's your own piece, you know what I mean? And then you... Well, I'll tell you, uh, nowadays, well, for the past few years, it's a lot more clientele. For many, many years now, it's clientele. Uh, whenever I do something for myself, uh, it's, it's very rare or something that I'll fit in between uh, clients work and usually something small or you know something very simple that I could do right away but the majority is more clientele work as Bob Ross used to say there's no such thing as a, an accident it's all happy accidents or mistakes how you get we have 80, many. you get 80 percent into it and all of a sudden you're like you nick something and you got to take paint off. How frustrating is that, or do you do that a lot, or is just hopefully yeah. nobody sees the mistake? Well, it, in the beginning, it used to be frustrating when I was still in the learning process. But you know, after 22 years, now uh, uh, a mistake that I make, as uh, Ross used to say, it is a happy mistake, uh, especially if you know if you do it <laughs> quite so often because you are doing so much work, and it's one after the other. That uh, now it's it's an easy mistake that you can fix. Uh, you know things that others would say. Well, listen, man, I don't know what to do. Am I, do I have to strip that? Do I have to now clean that up and do this? For me, I'll just put a little paint over and then start mixing again and start shading it. All of a sudden, it blends in. You won't even know the mistake was made. Two more questions. Sure. How do you deal with the doldrums? What I mean by doldrums, I mean there's only so many Frankenstein heads you can paint, or how many 
for me, sometimes it's like, oh, here we go with another one. And we all gravitate to our favorites. Sure. But there's certain times like, man, I wish there was something, a breath of fresh air. How do you, how do you stay on top of your game? Oh, sure. Uh, there, there was a point, and that's a very good question. There was a point that I used to do uh, a lot of superhero kits for clients, uh, even though I love my Universal Monsters and, and horror in general. But uh, I, I did a few because I, I did some pieces for Bowen Design, uh, actually. Um, I did the Apocalypse, I did the Venom crouching in the corner in the building, and uh, quite a few other small busts, about 10 or 12 uh, pieces from them. Uh, because those were uh, exposed and they were out there like the statue form and other uh, Marvel and DC forums. Uh, my name popped up, uh, look what Saul did, you know, these superhero pieces. Now they started contacting me. Uh, but at the point that, you know, I did one Wonder Woman, and now they all want to send me that one Wonder Woman, and now I'm doing ten of those same Wonder Womans at the same time, it became kind of like, you know, I want to pull my hair out, you know. I love the piece, it looks beautiful, but when you do so many of them, but on the other side of the coin, if somebody gives me a Frankenstein monster and I get ten of those Frankenstein monsters, it's different because that's what I love. Even though I love my comic books and I love my superheroes, but the monsters are, you know, my first love. So it, it, it's not repetitious for me. I can do that all day long. Question, inform me because I'm a little pre-paced. Is there, what is it if you paint the, the master and then it goes overseas? And do, what is it? Other people recopy what you originally done? Is that part of your process? Yes. Uh, well, back in the day, I don't know if anything changed now with... Uh, uh, great company Sideshow uh, Toys now. I mean, it's amazing what Sideshow does. The quality work is incredible. And I have a few friends that in the industry, in the garage grade industry, that do work for Sideshow. But when I did the work for Boeing, uh, Boeing Designs, uh, what I would do was I would do two uh, masters. One, I, from what I was told, one would go to Boeing and the other one would go to China. And then in China, they would try to replicate my paint job and then it will come back and hopefully it will look at least close or similar to that. And then we use that for the box art too, so, you know. Talk about, in conclusion, Jersey Fest. How has this grown as you see it getting bigger or is it nice that it's a little more intimate, it's not as crowded and where do you see it going here on the East Coast for us? Well, I'll tell you, if I may, just uh, from the start. Jersey Fest started with six guys in the basement. Uh, and it was just, you know, the show promoter asking a couple of friends, come over to the house, come over to the basement, bring some toys, bring some, you know, uh, your, your kids, and let's work on them, and, uh, you know, we get something to eat, and then watch a movie. And that's how it all started. From one year to another, you know, 10 guys, and then it grew again to about 12 to 15 guys, until the last time that we were there, it grew to about 60 guys. And that's why I think when he decided that, you know, I think, I think we're going to have to go a little bigger than this, and here we are now at a hotel, and I'll tell you, I think this is the fifth year now uh, that it's public. And uh, I'll tell you, Rob, Dave Tamacchio and Rob Saloni has made an incredible jump. It's amazing what they've done. I look around each year, uh, specifically this year too, and I look around and I cannot believe the incredible work that they have done. Uh, many don't realize the work involved behind the scenes. Uh, you know, it's 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 great to come to the shows and buy kits and and you know see people and have a good time and that's amazing. That's what I love about this. Uh, we're all like one big family. Uh, you know, we're all a bunch of artists, collectors, sculptors, and from all around the world, man. And no matter how old you are, what age, or what color you are, it brings everybody together. And that that to me is amazing. Uh, but what goes behind these shows? is work. I'm telling you, the work is amazing. And I take my hat off to Rob Saloni and Dave Tamacchio and their family for doing what they do. And Jersey Fest has been growing every single year and has become an incredible show here in the East Coast. And I personally, if I may, want to thank everyone that comes here and supports, whether they come as a vendor or they come as a collector or just to buy or just to say hello. Uh, you guys are just as big a supporters as anyone behind the scene. So thank you all.